Engine problems are no fun. But they're even less fun when they're in a giant mining truck. That's an issue. So when a guy like Quentin calls you on a Sunday morning and says, my dump truck broke down, I need a hand, it could mean you're going out to fix an airline, or it could mean you're loading up a flatbed trailer with this giant Caterpillar engine and headed to a mine shop in Nevada. And as you can probably guess by the fact there's a giant Caterpillar engine on our flatbed, we're heading to a mine shop in Nevada. I don't know what exactly size or model number this, this here engine is. All I know is it's like a five, 6,000 pound Caterpillar engine. Uh, freshly rebuilt, all ready to go. Quentin had it sitting at his shop uh, up here in Oregon. And uh, so I ran up here with the flatbed. This is actually the first load for the new flatbed. And uh, we got it loaded up. Now we got to head south. Quentin is down there with the truck that apparently blew the engine. It's a big truck. So uh, we've got 350, 400-ish miles to go. Go see what kind of shenanigans we are getting into today. Lots and lots of middle of nowhere driving out here. We're almost into burns. We're gonna stop there, top off with some fuel, check the hubs on the trailer, check the tires, make sure the load's still tied down. And then we got another few hours of nothing until we get down to the border at McDermott, Nevada. Check out platform trailer. These things are nifty. Very, very expensive, but they do a lot of tricky and, and cool stuff. So check this thing out. All of these wheels go up and down individually and all of them turn so you can move this trailer sideways and all kinds of stuff. And then it splits there, 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 and extends and retracts and does all kinds of cool stuff. And then there's, there's my old a little flatbed here. Feeling kind of inadequate at the moment, but he gets the job done. Like I said, middle of nowhere. Uh, we're between Burns and Burns Junction. About southeastern Oregon. There's just nothing for miles and miles around. Love it. So we are stopped in McDermott, Nevada, which is the border, the border of Oregon's right there. We're on the Nevada side little gas station here stopped here for our lunch break so up in here we have uh, our lunch cooking the eco flow cooking it up in the microwave got our big yankum rope down here um, having some breakfast for lunch my wife packed me some hamburger and beans and stuff for dinner I heat up tonight but for lunch got some uh, sausage and egg mix bowl heating up and uh, we got to take a half hour off per legal DOT requirements and all that stuff. So we'll do that here while we eat and then continue south and then east. Our big Caterpillar engine here is still doing just fine. So people ask that quite a bit. And yes, I am subject to and still have to follow all the uh, all the DOT hours of service stuff. So that means on this trip, you know, we're running e-logs. Got to take a 30 minute break. So our lunch break somewhere within that first eight hours of the day. So we're doing that here. we will be good to go the rest of the way. And once we get there, uh, I'm going to take 10 hours off. Consecutive time totally off duty before um, I go back home, which is fine because I'm not even going to try to come back home today. I'm not going to do it until tomorrow anyway, which will be well more than 10 hours off. Got a bed right here to sleep in. Then we'll head back home tomorrow. One half mile, take the ramp on the right to I-80 East. Okay, finally on the big road. So Speed limit, speed limit 75, which is, can I just say, look at those mountains up there, the sunset on them, the whole valley's down in the shade, it's like right on the snow line right now, light it up, perfect. It ain't so bad out here.
finally, as you could probably see by that big giant excavator up there at the shop, uh, yanking an engine out of a giant ass truck, we have made it. Uh, we're just getting pulled in here. We'll see what they want us to do with this thing and uh, <laughs> where, where I can park to go to bed tonight because it's been a long day. I got 365 excavator here, acting as the crane. Good night, Quentin. How's it going? Well, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And this is your truck, one of your rentals, not yeah. a customer's? It's supposed to go out tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, so I go and I, I go to make a test run with it. I'm like, this thing ain't running right. Pull the valve covers off, and I'm like, hey, that rocker's not doing anything. Pull it apart. Go to look at the lifters, and one of the lifters is like jammed sideways in the block, and I'm like, oh no! So that means engine comes out, you save the day, bring me a brand new engine. All I did was drive. <laughs> you guys are doing the work, dude. This but but now I see why you're in such a hurry to get this engine down here. Yeah. Yeah. This has to go to work tomorrow, ideally. It's probably gonna go to work like Wednesday. But <laughs> so we've been pulling like. Or 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, shut her down. Yeah. So. so this is a 773B model. This is one of Quentin's rental machines. Uh, he has a whole fleet of big equipment that he rents out to the mines. This is one of them. But apparently, it's supposed See, to be on the job you tomorrow. Rigging? You're rigging? Yeah, you're the rigging guy. What do you think of that stuff? Cable? D-ring? Trap? Why don't we yank him rope it? I would. <laughs> yeah. That's big. That's a big problem. I need another one. Another one or a big one? Either or. <laughs> I think they've all about on the floor, but they're right there. No, 11 16. Uh-huh. You need three quarters? Oh, everything was going great. Trust me, it was clean. Everything was good. And then it just went. <gasps> And then it's like, let's just get this done. Yeah. I've had those days. Um. <laughs> Welcome to my freaking life. <laughs> Hydraulic lines, air hoses, and blown in. Come up? Yeah.
Hold up. I didn't want to get under it, so I extended out the selfie stick on the camera and used it as a pole to poke it. I don't see what took you guys so long. It seemed like yeah. it happened really quick and yeah, easy to me. It. That's my bad. Huh? <laughs> this thing is not meant to come out of there. Well, not when it has a water tank in the way. Oh. You know, I woke up this morning. He said it just needs a motor. That's all he said. It just, <laughs> it, needs a motor. It just this giant ass truck just needs a motor. Yeah. No big deal. Well, I, I've got you a motor if that helps. Yeah. Woo. Look at the big old hunk of iron. Right middle. I think he was building Yeah. There's about four. That's a roller there. That's no good. If you're wondering how you eat dinner in a mine shop on a Sunday night. Oh yeah, check this out. <laughs> Chef Quentin over here. Insert Pulp Fiction gourmet shit. <laughs> a barbecued pizza and microwave chicken nuggets in the I want, grill. I want that crisp. You see that? Do you hear this? It is crisp. I hear it. That is the crisp. <laughs> Nothing but the best Damn. here. Damn. <laughs> well, it is the next morning and uh, we're getting the engine unloaded right now. Last night it was really late. They've been working all day, so we just had some dinner, if you can call that dinner. Everybody went to bed, um, not all in there. They went to bed in the RV in there. I went to bed in there. Now we're getting this thing unloaded. We got sunrise over the desert out here. And then I am going to get loaded back up with some parts. Uh, obviously, a bunch of these are parts machines that get stripped down for parts to make other machines run. And uh, some of them we're going to load back up and take back up to uh, up to the organ shop. I don't know what we're getting though. Lots of options here. She's nice. Is it the right one? Oh yeah. And it is nice. All the belts are here, filters, all the little trinkets are here. Like you got this little air thing for your throttle, all that's there. So it's a complete, complete, complete drop-in. Complete. Look at the belts are even on it. Oh yeah. I wonder if it's got an air compressor. Quentin, by the way, uh, last week we were riding around the rollback together, hauling some stuff around. Yeah. And he was so happy telling me how his rental division had the lowest monthly parts bill it's ever had, and how great that was. No, oh, I got a load of uh, what is it, Liddell Luck? Is that what you call? <laughs> yeah. <it>? And uh, <laughs> that that low parts bill just went out the window. Yeah, one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's what one of these engines costs, right yeah. here. One hundred and fifty grand. And then you call me to throw it on a trailer I'd never pulled before and send it 75 miles an hour across the desert. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Get her down. Man, this thing looks cherry. Yeah, it does. It's all brand new fittings and lines and wiring and everything. Mm-hmm. This thing is just complete, ready to drop in. So, Quentin. Yeah. What's the plan now? Replace absolutely everything you could possibly replace now that the motor's Every out. Every single hose that you cannot get to while the motor is in it is getting brand new. I don't care how big or expensive it is because we're not, we have to. Yeah. For reliability, if we're going to rent this thing out and it goes out there and blows a hose, we need to be able to change it. So we're, we're replacing all the hoses. So hose replacement today, cleaning the whole engine bay, cleaning the shop, and shop then thing. tomorrow dropping that back in, and then Wednesday it goes to work. I think so. That's the plan. That's an ambitious plan. So every one of those hoses you can see in there, that's going to be a nightmare once that big old engine's sitting in here. That's all getting replaced. Whether it needs it or not, she's getting changed. All right.
could you imagine changing that back? I guess they haven't seen it. With, I guess they will on my video, but yeah, it's impossible. it's impossible. No, it is possible. You just have to pull the engine back out to do it. Or pull the water tank off. Yeah. Yeah, two things that you don't want to do. How, how many gallons is that tank? Twelve thousand gallons. Nice. What's a normal water truck? Three? Four. Four. But going down the road, you can only be about thirty-four to thirty-six, depending on the truck or okay. your over or so your overweight. Three of those. Yeah. No, it's almost four. four. Okay, I'm gonna head back north. Okay, thank you for the help. Thank you for saving Just the day. Drop those at the yard. I sure hope you didn't bring the Casey Luck with you. Cause that motor looks real yellow and shiny. <laughs> so yeah, they got their, uh, their work cut out for. Them. So yeah, today's Monday. Clean up, replace hose day. Tomorrow's Tuesday, install engine day. And then Wednesday, it goes back to work. Uh, my truck is all loaded up. I would like to stay here and like work on that too. That looks like a lot of fun, but I've got to get back home uh, because not tomorrow, but the next day we're leaving on a, a family vacation, finally. So, I got all these cabs loaded up on here. There's big four cabs of, well, big giant trucks like that. These are all haul truck cabs, I think, which are, those are like that one in there they're working on. So, I'm going to get going, head back north, and we'll see what sort of adventure that brings. How's that for some views? That one truck way off down there in the bottom. Probably gonna have to check on cows or water. Well, it's the next morning, and as you can see, I'm at home, but we're not done yet. We still got the haul truck cabs on the trailer. Uh, I could have made it to Iron King's uh, yard here in Prineville uh, yesterday, but it had been like just before 5 o'clock, and I didn't want to show up right at quitting time and have people have to stay late to get me unloaded. So, since I had to pass my house to get there, I just stopped at my house instead. I had a nice dinner with the girls. Everything made it here, no problem. Had to sleep in my own bed, which is cool. And uh, now we're gonna get truck fired up. We've got about 30 minutes down the road to go, and uh, go get these things dropped off. Okay, off we go. That guy's got a flat tire. This guy's got him a couple brand new skid steers. The nice ones. We are gonna go ahead to drop off some. Old truck caps. We are here. We're just backing in off the road so we don't have to back out onto the road. And then we'll get unstrapped and unloaded. So, where they wanted them was not in that yard at all. So, we're over at the other yard now. And I'm gonna get these things untied. We've got, that's not where my bar is. Where did I put it? It is in here. Yes. Okay, so we've got four cabs on here. This one is way off to this side. These things are actually pretty heavy. They're like 7,000 pounds or so. This one's way off to this side because it's got the catwalk on the other side still. So to make up for it, I put those two just a little bit off to that side. This one here centered. Here's my toolbox that's got to get mounted to this at some point, but I didn't have time before this trip because this trip happened right after I bought the trailer. Which is good because it justified buying the trailer. But I gotta mount this because that's super hokey and I don't like it. Uh, that's tied back there. I'll have to hop up and get it. 
and then I had to use a ratchet on this one because none of the winches on the trailer lined up with where they would get this into the cab. So, just use the hand ratchet. Another thing, people are going to talk crap about being outside the rub rail, but the way these hooks grab, if you go outside the rub rail, it pulls it all the way into the throat of it right there and if you look on the ones where I went inside look at that it doesn't grab all the way in and it tip loads the hook in there which is not correct so I kind of did it both ways on this trailer just to see what I like better and I think I like outside better I don't like loading the hook like that These are brand new straps, so they're not trained yet. They're also rolled around the wrong way backwards to throw them over. But we can fix that. See, outside the rub rail, all the way up into the throat of the hook, how it should be. The forklift doesn't go high enough to do this like correctly, so we're just going to do it. That'll work. As long as they hit the ground, it's mission accomplished, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You already did your job. You've got to get yeah, they're here. That was yeah, my part of this. Yeah, your job. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go I'm gonna take a nap in the sleeper. Will you guys take care of this? If you could roll my straps up, too, and you're done, that'd be great. Come down a bit, Jack. There we go. Should be good. Oh, will hook this one. All right. That one was not hooked yet. I'll do this one instead then. Okay.
back up here so I can get a picture with my phone. See? That one we kind of set in the sides of that uh, headboard. See, so had a turn coming out to clear it. I had to go strap my toolbox back in. So I made it back home. Uh, I am officially done with my part of that project. And uh, that was one hell of a test run for the new trailer that was completely untested until then, but uh, not a, even the slightest hiccup. Every light worked, not a one air leak in it. All the hubs stayed cool, which they should since everything's all rebuilt. It worked great, like very, very good. So I would say for $4,500, this was not a bad purchase it's already already paying for itself so truck also the truck not even the slightest hiccup on the truck the whole way coming back we hit a little bit of snow a little bit of freezing stuff um nothing bad the roads are fine to drive on the whole time so very happy with that very happy with that but another question you really have is did they get the truck running and trust me i wish i could have stayed there for another couple days help get that engine put in, see that thing fire up and drive off to work. But like I said, we've got a family trip in the RV coming up uh, tomorrow, so I had to kind of get home for that. So instead what I'll do is give you this little teaser clip right here. You ready, Joe? I'm ready. Okay, bring the thunder, Robert. And then I'll leave the links right here on Quentin's Iron King channel where you can go watch this whole adventure from start to finish, see what happened before I got there and what happened after I left.